everybody, and welcome to the Board Game Geek Show for September 13th, 2019. I'm your host, Scott Alden. And holy cow, look at all these hosts I have. Joining me are my lovely co host Debbie Eric Barton, Lincoln Damerst, and what? The Brothers Murph, Nick and Mike Murphy. How are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, Hi! We found a way in with the back door. <laughs> we and got infiltrated. Here. Uh-huh. <laughs> We're Wait, good. how'd you get on the Skype channel? I, I, don't don't know. Know. I don't know. We just we just call random people. Just roll with it. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> you know we're never no click. <laughs> we're here. Well, it's great to have you guys. <laughs> Thank um, you. I want to move into BGG announcements right up front. Uh, the biggest change this month is the launch of the mobile front page. Not yes. redesigned, but just uh, freshening up and uh, making it work on mobile phones. So no more uh, pinching and zooming on the front page. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, uh, awesome. We're very happy to have that released. Uh, the designer, Kyle uh, Gordy, and myself are continuing to work on le- some legacy things to get just get them working on mobile phone. Um, this is not the redesign that we've been talking about for years and years. This is just a sem- temporary kind of fix for the older stuff so that you guys can use it on the phones. Like, we surpassed more than 50% of the site traffic is mobile. I don't yeah. know if you guys wow. Wow, is that mentioned right? that before. Yeah, kind wow. of crazy. So no more pinching and zooming when you're looking up rules. You're like, how do I move that? pawn and tapestry what does that mean like you know well we're happy to have that done and of course we're going to fix some of the older stuff as i mentioned before nice all right also a big announcement for this month september 24th the tickets for bgg spring 2020 are going on sale can you guys believe it this year how fast it's going yes it's it's too fast that's so far that's so soon (laughs) so i'm gonna so i'm gonna say this once and i'll try to be as clear as mud BGG Spring is back at the DFW Hyatt Regency. That's the Hyatt Regency inside the airport, or inside the airport grounds, I should say. And not BGG Con, which is in November, which is in downtown Dallas, at the the Hyatt (laughs) Regency Reunion Tower with the ball. Just think of the ball downtown. Just in, in, go in, towards in, the ball. If yeah. you're the, yeah. the ball. Hey, it's the one if in the it's, fall. If it's fall, go towards the ball. Ooh. Ooh. Mike <laughs> nailed it. The BGG uh, Spring 2020 is over the Memorial Day weekend, which Eric has given me the dates, which is May 22nd to the 25th. Nice. Cool. So please cool. join us. It's going to be fun. This is an all ages show, by the way. BGG Con is not all ages. BGG Spring is. So Excellent. you can bring kids if you want. Cool. Aww. Us? Aww. We got to sit at the kids' table. We can only play Hava games, but we get to be there. Yeah, we only, that's play, we only play the kids' games. It's yeah. fair. I'm down. They're fun. <laughs> so um, something that's coming up a little sooner than BGG Con is Essen in Germany. Spiel, the as Spiel. Eric likes to call it. The Spiel. The Spiel. Uh, it's a, a big game convention in Germany that we're going to go to and cover um, a lot of stuff. So Eric, why don't you give us an update of where <laughs> we're at on the preview? I know there's a lot of games coming out, which is so crazy to me. Yeah. Eric. So right now our Spiel 19 preview has roughly 900 titles in it. Uh, Mertz Verlag, the organizer, has announced 1,500 titles in their listing. We don't cover all the games for three and four-year-olds. Wow. That's usually like 100 of them right there. <laughs> um, but I'll be adding more to the preview over the next five or six weeks. We are doing the live stream schedule as well. We are approximately three quarters full. We live stream for, I think, wow. 41 hours. Oh. With a new game every five or ten minutes. Uh, we're packing them in a little tight this year. Uh, Doug might be slightly overambitious in what we're doing, but <laughs> we will make it work. We ah. just tell everyone, you, here's how much time you have, and then get the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from that. Pretty much. Well, Eric, you just knocked out. Your, your, your lunch breaks are now off the schedule. I mean, what? Yeah. 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 That's Those three games right there. Yeah. There's no time for um, some schnitzel. Yeah. yeah. Mm-mm. This year, we instituted pre-orders where publishers can set up pre-orders so you can order a game ahead of time and know that it's waiting for you when you get to Spiel. So if you are not going to Spiel for some reason, you can order games and pick them up at BGGCon in November or have them shipped to your home if you live in the contiguous United States. This is called the Cardboard Caravan. It's done in collaboration with Fun Again Games, and those titles that you can pre-order for pickup at BGGCon or shipment to your home are listed in the Spiel preview. You can click on a pre-order button and it will say pick up at Spiel or pick up at BGGCon or order for your home. And the prices are different because the publisher sets the pre-order price. If you're picking it up in Essen at the show, 
And fun again sets the price if you're picking up elsewhere, which you have to factor in double shipping because they're shipping the games from Essen to the U.S. and then from the U.S. to Dallas or to your home. So that's that's yeah. the reason behind the different prices there. Yeah, it's uh, there's not currently a way to see the cardboard caravan separate from pre-orders, but that's my job. I'm going to fix that today. Oh, oh wow. Tonight. Today. Oh. So wow. back in time, I'm, we're doing time machine thing. Yeah. By the time you watch this show, it should it's be right. so you're welcome for it already being done. <laughs> you're Isn't that crazy how time travel works? It's so fun. Cool. So one more announcement for BGG. I'm going to let Lincoln take it and the Brothers Murph talk about the In Focus video series that we just launched. So Lincoln, take it away. Yeah, the In Focus series is something that uh, Scott and I have been working on for a while. And it's a series of videos designed to uh, highlight new games coming out and potentially older titles that publishers are trying to get more awareness on. And we are doing them in conjunction with the publishers, but we are producing them. And Mike and Nick are main guys that are doing it right now. What do you guys have to say about it? Um, yeah, so it's it's kind of like a little, uh, we kind of think of it as kind of like a movie trailer. It's to get you interested in the yeah. game so that you can then, if you are interested in it, look into it more. You can start reading some of the forums, watch like a whole how to play video. Yeah, it's or, a jumping off point. Do I, am I going to be interested in this game? Let me watch a two to three minute video just to see what's in this thing. What does it look like? What's it feel like? And then you can continue to yeah. do research from there. Because a lot of us, and I can say myself very much included, like I, I just don't have the time or the patience to watch a review on like every single game that comes out. And so I just kind of want to know, am I interested enough to look into this further? And right. that at least is how we kind of are approaching this series is like giving you a snapshot, kind of a movie trailer and just show you like what the game's about, the heart of the game. So you can make an informed decision of whether or not you want to look into it further and then maybe potentially get the game down the line or, or whatever. And so that's kind of how we're dealing with it. And they're super fun to do, super fun to film. Yeah. And yeah, it's a little bite size. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we've been working with a bunch of different people to de uh, to produce the videos. Um, as the in the beginning, Mike and Nick are going to be doing most of them, but hopefully, as we grow with the the series, we'll have a lot more people doing them. Rodney will probably still be doing some occasionally and stuff like that. That's the hope. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. I really like the the movie trailer is kind of the exact kind of same thing as what we're talking about so yeah yeah, yeah it's the movie trailers for board games the yeah, yeah. pretty much for the board that's, game. yeah that's, that's right. right that's the that's the that's the plan you know it's gonna make them look taste. cool you know that's it exactly and yeah. thanks again for bringing us on we're, yeah. we're super excited appreciate to the opportunity yeah. if you're a publisher and interested in our in focus videos get a hold of me at lincoln at boardgamegeek.com and we'll get you the information about the program great moving on to everybody's favorite segment what have you been playing eric i know what you've been playing i'm jealous <laughs> jenga what is it yeah what? what is Deep Blue? What's Deep Blue? Deep Blue is a game coming from Days of Wonder from Daniel Skjold Peterson and Asker Harding Grenerud. Ooh. Yes. Got their names. Yay. Uh, it's a two to five player collaborative kind of press your luck game in which you are diving for treasure. And I'll do a, a fuller video down the road where I talk more in detail and talk more about it. The gist of the game is that you have two boats. You're going to tra travel around to different diving locations. And when you dive, if other ships are on that area, they are diving with you. But one player is in charge of the dive and they're responsible for how far they want to go in terms of pressing their luck and trying to dig out things and not run out of oxygen or hit creatures. And you are going to gain value from what you find based on one, where you are on the dive, because different locations may give different values to different items that you find. And two, based on what you have in your hand, because Deep Blue is also a hand building game along the lines of Concordia-ish, where you are buying crew members and put them in your hand. And some of them will let you move your ships farther. They will supply money to hire other crew people, and they will add more value to things that you find. So initially, for example, there are no green gems in the bag, but you can, when a green character comes up, you'll add a green gem to the bag and you can buy a green character. And now you will have the only, you'll be the only person who has a chance to score from that green gem. Oh, so there's little okay. various things on there where you customize your hand and then you can gamble as much as you want when you're in charge of the dive, trying not to run out of oxygen or be chased to the surface by creatures. Oh, okay. Oh. There you go. Very cool. How's the art? Uh, it's nice. I mean, it's Days of Wonder. If I say it's, Days of Wonder? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The no, covers any indicator. That's a very good cover. Nice. Yeah. Oh, so. wow. 
Ooh. And it's a standard big box. It's got plastic treasure chest inside, so you can keep your ancient coins because Ooh. that's all that matters in the end is how many ancient coins you have. Everything gets converted to ancient coins. I'm not sure what sort of market <laughs> system that is. You know, yeah. that's what people are looking for on eBay. If it's treasure, it's like, well, it better be doubloons or something like that. And like, I got ancient coins. There you go. Points. I that's like right. it. Hmm. Awesome. The game does not come with metal coins. I guess that would oh, be an upgrade. But they're ancient. Yes. What? <laughs> ancient plastic ancient, coins or ancient, ancient cardboard pla- coins? They are ancient cardboard coins. Yeah, oh. they a wonder title. Under <laughs> the water, under the sea? I don't think those would hold up. I think those would be much. I feel like, yeah. You were initially <laughs> finding finding gems, ah, and then you were converting, oh, converting them to coins on the shore ah, okay. when your hands I still are don't think those cardboard coins would still survive. <laughs> I feel like they'd wear down, but you know, whatever. Once you get down there in the deeps, so that's some cardboard pulp. Like, oh, it must be worth a lot of money. <laughs> You're rich. Hey, Nick and Mike, what have you guys been playing? Uh, all right. One game I've been playing a lot of is Empires of the North by Ignacy Trebechek and Joanna Kinjanka and Portal Games. Uh, this game has been super duper fun just because you have all those new factions. Like we admittedly got to Imperial Settlers late. Like Way we late. just started playing right before this came out. And I was like, oh, this is so fun. There's these different people you can play as. And then I heard there's this kind of new version that's very much similar while doing its own thing. Uh, and I've been really enjoying trying different factions every time and seeing kind of what engine do I create with these people versus those people and, and solving that puzzle. So like I've been all about this and started soloing it as well, which give like little scenarios yeah, little and challenges. slight changes each time. Now, yeah. do you like this game because you are incredibly good at it? It helps. <laughs> I, 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 this is like, this is like. He's so good. I don't know what it is. You're, it's the worst sounding thing, but like I'm playing so good. I think I'm not doing it right. I'm just like, this is just really easy for me, you guys. Like. <laughs> I just have so many points every time. No, you just, you just right? crush at it. Absolutely yeah, crush. But, but I, yeah, that's been part of it, though, is is it's a little bit of a puzzle. Every time you get a new uh, faction, it's like, okay, how do these... Oh, these people like to store stuff and do all the things. Okay, I think I got it. Now let me go. So that's been really fun to explore. And I still haven't gotten through all the factions even. So that's been... This has been my jam lately. Yeah, I really all about been, it. I well, I like the wait. fact that in the base of this, you get six factions. Yes. Whereas Imperial Settlers only got four. Right. Which is just... And there more factions are better. You know, just... Yeah. Yeah, that's my thing. It's really good. That's just me. It's really what really about good. you? Me. An expansion, I'll mention, an expansion with two more factions will be out at Spiel. Ooh. At Spiel, really? Uh-huh. Oh, that's even more. Holy factions. That's I might have to that's not pre-order good to that. That's not good to know. <laughs> I know. Here we go. <laughs> oh, Lordy. Um, okay, so for me, the game I'm going to choose is a game we actually don't have, but it's uh, a game called City of the Big Shoulders. Right. Uh, this is a, uh, a stock market game, and I need to preface this by saying I can't think of anything I can find more boring than stock markets. And so <laughs> I, I tend to not really like stock market games because I just the theme and the mechanics just don't generally intrigue me. They just don't. Yeah. I don't know what it is. They just have I've never had much interest uh, in that. Uh, God, maybe that'll be ch- that might be changing now. I'm not entirely Apparently, sure. Apparently, man. Because uh, I played City of the Big Shoulders at our, our local con recently. Um, and it was told, hey, it's a big stock market game uh, set in like old time Chicago. And it's worker placement, which is how I think uh, our friend got me to play it because I'll play anything worker placement. And so I was just like, ooh, okay, we'll try it. And it was it was so amazing. It was so good. So it's a game. So you're in old timey Chicago in 1875 or so. And uh, you're getting companies and you're getting stock in the companies. When you get a company, you buy 30% of the company and then you have what's called the director's share of it. Okay. And... Um, the the cool thing is, and one thing I really like about the game is that you win the game by having the most money, but by having the most personal wealth. So money that's in your company is not yours. You then have to take it out of your company and give it to yourself by paying dividends and paying out and things like that. And then that money is what you use to win the game. But to buy stock in companies, whether it's your own company or someone else's companies, or to start a new company, you have to pay out of your own personal wealth. So it's this balance Uh. of of using the money that's in your various companies and using your own personal money to buy more stock into those companies is a really interesting balance that is kind of fiddly because you have to make sure you keep all your money separate, which is kind of tough, but ultimately it works. So it's like you got to spend money to make money, but then you have to get your money out of your money to make it your money to win. 
Exactly. That, those words. Exactly. Nailed. But then it's very cool because during the <laughs> worker placement spot, there's all these buildings that you're continually putting out throughout the game. So there's more mm. and more worker placement spots. But the cool thing is, is like, so say I'm going here to get workers to put into Oscar Meyer. Like I had Oscar Meyer, which is one of the companies. Um, my company is paying for that, not me personally, because the uh -huh. workers are going to the company. So it's really beneficial for you to kind of like, not necessarily blow all your company's money, but that <laughs> money isn't points at the end of the game. So it's beneficial for you to like use it as much as possible. Cause also oh. as you sell goods, more money is coming back into the company. And so it was this very interesting um, balance between all of it. And I, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> and it's, I was blown away that I liked a stock market game this much and it was absolutely incredible. And I, I, just loved it so so much. So this is one that was on Kickstarter and just got. It delivered. was yeah, it was on Kickstarter. It's by um, it's by Parallel Games and by Raymond Charles the uh, Third and Emily uh, Deering did the art. It's really kind of cool pen and ink kind of old timey looking art. It's absolutely gorgeous. Nice. Uh, yeah, and it's incredible. If you like stock market games or worker placement, try it. It's amazing. Oh, so I'm so curious, good. Nick. Did you have you ever played an 18xx game? No, because that was the first thing I thought. Is like you they need look, I know he's explaining he the next game. <laughs> I know, I know, and that's why I'm like, I need to now play one because <laughs> I look at 18xx games and I'm like, why would you ever want to play that? Um, and so I need to now do it because I'm like, oh, maybe I like stock market games. Maybe maybe just I like them. No oh. trains, you're good. Can and you, frankly, can I maybe you just... bankrupt a company in that game. Can you no. dump a company on somebody else? You oh. can't dump a company on someone else that I that I know of. I do know in a variant of the game, you can have like a hostile takeover. Whereas if <laughs> I buy more than 50% of your company, it then becomes my company. And so you can do that. But I don't believe you can like straight bankrupt somebody. Um, at least we didn't. And, and it was never explained to you that you could. So. Just straight defraud your business but and yeah, stuff. And... I might have to start trying those kinds of games. I really... As you were explaining to me, I was like, this sounds all pretty familiar. Yeah, man. it's... it's. I know it's it's one of these people are like, you just play those games. I'm like, oh, I'm guessing so the worker ugly. placement part of it is probably the more interesting part for you. Well, I mean, for I me, for sure. And I know so. that's probably what took was me over in. was the worker placement yeah. uh, made it way more accessible for me at least. Right. Yeah. When did the BGG show become the Brothers Merce live stream here? What's going on? What? <laughs> Am I talking too much? I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, we're done for 10 minutes. We'll be here. No, I mean, it's, it's cool. I, I, uh, I sense your passion to that game, and I've been following it for many years. I just got mine delivered, so oh, it's play, on my dude. table. It's been in play. development that long? It it's been a long time. We previewed it at Origins, I think, in 2017. Wow. wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, small correction: the designer is Raymond Chandler the third, not Raymond what? Charles. Not not oh, Thurston Howell the third. Not <laughs> Thurston Howell the third, nor Sorry. Raymond Charles. The Robert Raymond Griffin Chandler the third. My apologies. I just, I just read balls. it wrong on my. I have BGG open on my phone on the new mobile. Look right. how yeah. smooth. <laughs> Look how smooth. <laughs> Look how smooth. <laughs> I, I just consult nice. my brain. I got a chance to play Abomination this weekend from Plat Hat Games, designed by Dan Blanchett. Um, it is a really, really interesting but grim uh, worker placement game. You are taking body parts, trying to assemble a new monster. You're the following in the. It's called Abomination: Era Frank, the Era of Frankenstein, and you are trying to. Uh, you're being. Uh, what is it? I, I guess you're being hired, but you're given the direction from a shadowy figure, hulking shadowy figure, which you can probably assume is. Uh, Frank, uh, Frankenstein's monster himself trying to get a new uh, mate and uh. you're digging up body parts from around Paris for some reason we're not in London um, and uh, or in Germany or wherever or Vienna I don't know where the Jersey Frankenstein took place <laughs> but the deal is is you are going to hospitals and graveyards and the guillotine where the uh, the central the public square where you're getting body parts Ooh, okay. and you're trying to assemble uh, and char you know, get the power. It's, it's basically battery cells, the latent jars, which are capture the j uh, energy, and you have to recharge them to try to animate the body parts. And the goal is to first person to animate all six body parts wins the game. But at the same time, you've got the captain coming to try to stop Frankenstein. Uh, Frankenstein's monster. It's Frankenstein. I know we say that in the game plenty. <laughs> <laughs> you try to. He, you're trying to get to the build the body before he arrives because when he arrives he you know something else happens in the game it's got some storytelling elements ah. and there are cards that uh event cards that come out potentially in the game that would target a player specifically often depending on where they're at in the game 
uh, or if sometimes a random player that the person who's the start player chooses, but they could give them things, take things from them. Uh, all of it's pretty horrifying. You're trying to, <laughs> you've got three charts, one that's your reputation, one that's your uh, expertise, and one that is your humanity. And humanity is where you take the most hits because you're killing people and potentially or seeing th horrible things and it you're constantly battling to keep that humanity up so that it doesn't hit you with uh, re reduced reputation or reduced victory points, which most games need. But it's really, really good. Beautiful work, too. On one hand, you're basically killing to raise something yep. ill people like terminally ill people to take their body parts or and then giving like flowers to orphanages or something like that. Potentially. <laughs> like, I, I don't think there is no flower giving, but the oh, uh, none. there's no being a you, good person. You might be taking freshly dead people as in the uh, the, the guillotine victims uh, or the hospital. But there is absolutely one area of the board where you are murdering somebody. Oh uh, you're, uh, you're getting the most fresh parts there. That's for sure. But uh, it is pretty weird. It's a dark game. It's a little long. I know I, I had heard from folks at uh, Gen Con that they thought it was long. And it does run a little long. But it is thematically fantastic. And the artwork is really, really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Flat Hat really, really hit it out of the park on this one. Yeah, I'm excited to try it. I just, yeah. when I started hearing about like, well, if you want fresher body parts, you can just go to that crowd where someone just got executed and be like, I got it from here. Don't worry about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? The, like, the illustration is the head is separated from the body. Oh it's gosh, pretty, it's all pretty so grim awesome. art. Yeah. Now, do you have to follow like a general body or can you give him like seven legs? <laughs> oh yeah, it's any sex <laughs> body. Can you just go like leg, pieces. leg, 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 leg? Because that'd be metal. The puzzle, you do need the... I mean, you're satisfying the monsters. So oh, okay. he wants a satisfactory oh. body. What he doesn't he want now? two left hands. Uh, Very and, picky. But yeah, the pieces do go together. We were joking about that. Like, can we give him two left hands? It doesn't work quite that way. But uh, uh, it, it's pretty great. All right. Right cool. on. Scott, what have you been playing? Okay. So I've been playing Tapestry. Oh, Rodney brought it on the cruise and I played it the very first night with him. And then I borrowed it from him a couple other times. Uh, and I know we got to play at Lincoln together and I played yep. it another time after that. Um, and I really love it. Um, hopefully you got a chance to pre-order it. If not, I'm assuming another print run is following very quickly. I, don't I believe uh, that they're available from another vendor right now. Oh, okay. The main print run, I believe, is reserved for retailers. In response to Wingspan largely not being available at retailers, Stonemeyer went the other way and did a relatively small pre-order uh, allocation with yeah. the rest of it going to retailers. Okay, I see. My understanding, anyway. Tapestry is a two-hour civilization game where you weave the tapestry of your history, of your civilization with a special power, and moving up these four tracks on the board. The four tracks are military, science, technology, and exploration. And to do so, you are spending resources. So the game is very much a resource collection game. You collect the resources, you spend them, you move up the tracks, you get more resources. You keep repeating that, you score points. I've just made it sound very boring. <laughs> but basically, <laughs> <That's it. laughs> the cool part is all of the civilizations are like, they're so asymmetric, right? Like your civilization will let you maybe just advance in science very quickly. Like you're the alchemist, right? You're doing experiments as a little push your luck mini game. Whereas another uh, civilization, the the um, futurists start on level four of every techno of every track, so they got a huge jump, but they didn't get the bonuses to get there, right? So they they advanced up the tracks, but didn't get the first four. So everybody's got a different one. In addition, all the tapestry cards are super powerful, right? So when you when you advance to a next era, you play a tapestry card. And that tapestry card, the power, the powers are just so crazy. Like you're like, wow, that power is amazing. And then someone else plays another one. It's like, wow, that's even more amazing. Right. So you're kind of getting this super powered where you feel very powerful in the game as a civilization. Um, and then you play four eras, five eras, and then you're done and you score. An interesting thing that I've never seen in a game before, or at least one that I can remember, is a player can end early. Right. So if they play their five eras yeah. out. They're done. Like they, when I played the first game, Luke, um, Rodney's son was done 20, 20 or 30 minutes before everybody else. And he left and came back. <laughs> he left and got some really? like, dinner and then came back and he had lost. 
But, you know, everybody <laughs> lapped him or whatever. Maybe you shouldn't have ended so early. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? Once you run out of resources, you do advance to your next era, right? So you yeah. can't, it's like you can't do anything. So. Well, um, Everdell does that. Yeah. You're trying Everdell to like stretch your season. Season. Right. Yeah. Where you move on to the next season, even if the other people aren't. And you can, there's times where I've ended that game 20 minutes before yeah. I lost. And I always lost. So you okay. probably shouldn't end early. I, it's, <laughs> I think the moral of the story is don't end early. Just make quick decisions back yeah. to the civilization. That's it. Takaido has that too. Yeah. I just advance to the end of the track. I go for dinner. <laughs> Game <Anyways>. over. Bye. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you can get a copy. I thought it was pretty fantastic. Yeah, it's a beautiful game too. The uh, they there's a lot of fantastic miniatures in the game that are. Uh, I mean, it's all painted. It looks really yeah. great. Pre-painted. I, I, I still want to wa- give them a wash, but I, it's still really gorgeous. They did a yeah. nice job on it. A wash goes a long way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, and I should say, as a civilization game, one of the big biggest worries for me is the conflicts. Right, like I don't love conflict simulation games. Yeah, where you're just breaking stuff down. There's a significant trap system in this game. If I attack you and you have a trap card, I just lost. Mm. Right. Okay. Well, okay. That's but, crazy. But but those <laughs> are so. It's all so basic, right? I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. All you're doing is toppling their position. It doesn't really gain you anything. You've just lost an action. But you've moved into that space, right? So you you, you gain territory, right? There is a territory uh, scoring method. However, you have to uncover it, right? Yes. Or, or advance up the military track. Like if you want a military game, you can be aggressive, um, but people can change and divert their tactics to avoid aggression, right? So it's like you know, it, there is some aggression, there is some take down in the game. But you don't it's have to be random, aggressive. Like, you just lose a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, I was saying I like games that don't force you to have to build up and be aggressive. You know, I, I like where you can have the opportunity to do that and maybe force people to adapt. But, you know, something like through the ages, if you're not keeping up at least with other people to some degree with your military stuff, you're just going to get destroyed. Yeah, they're going to start declaring war yeah. and you're be screwed. So yeah. I like that. It's just like, okay, if you want to go that route, you certainly can. But, you know. The other thing is, is it's very, it's, it, you can't focus on that. You only have so many opportunities to do that. It's, it's on that track. And if you fo- focus on one track, you're going to suffer on other tracks because you need to, you can't fully focus. I Because the game I played with Scott on the cruise, I was the inventors, I think. And yeah. it, it led me down the technology track, which is great because there's a lot of fun stuff that happens on that track. But I didn't, I suffered on the rest. And I did okay on the game, but I was at least 80 points behind the leader or 70 yeah. points behind the leader. Wow. Um, and, and that's, yeah. It's not bad. I mean, I didn't feel like I missed out on anything. I had a good time. But you definitely need to focus on more things and try to raise yourself so that you can do other things. Because not only do you want... The other aspect of it that's interesting about the the, the uh, taking over areas is only two pieces of plastic can be on a tile. So there isn't a lot of t- back and forth with stuff mm. as far as taking over territories. So it's... I feel it's a limited limited but slightly frustrating element that is part of of a civilization building game and they've made it as low impact as possible while still having that in the game which i think is pretty great that's cool yeah i i haven't stopped thinking about it since i got back uh, i'm excited to get my pre-order copy um and then play it a few more times and see if you know really kind of explore it there's just so many like literally every civilization is just such a game changer you play the game differently based on what civilizations you have that's really and there's an option of of getting a second civilization i believe you got a second civilization correct i got the uh, game right i got the radio which allowed me to pick up of course i got it too late in the game it'd be a fun one to come out earlier yeah if it had come out earlier you could have exploited it but yeah Yeah. anyway that's uh tapestry cool yeah really good game definitely looking forward to having my own copy as well yeah uh let's move on to some news and uh, we're gonna skip kickstarter this week since we're going a little long so eric what do you got for us news wise so it's interesting hearing you guys talk about aggression and me thinking about what i was talking about here which is a new edition of azul yes. coming right. from, from next move games this is azul summer pavilion because you're now building a new place for the king you gotta build mm. a different place every time why not yes so this <laughs> Features the same style of gameplay where you've got factories. People are going to draft tiles from factories. You're going to build them up, but there's different ways to build things and different ways to score. So it's the same, but different. And that seems to be a running trend with a lot of games coming out where there's tons of spinoffs. There's a new uh, Quicks on board. So it's Quicks. 
But now there's a game board, which has some bonuses, and it affects some things that aren't clear. Or the mine extreme, where it's the mine, but now you've got two piles, where one is ascending and one is descending. Right. So there's tons of games. As I'm going through the spiel preview and keep adding things, it's more, it's this that you know with 30% different. So it's the thing that you like, and now... And different. I guess that's a way to stand above the rest, right? You already know this game. Yeah. And yes. you like it. And now you know this. Now you kind of know this game, but it's newer. Yeah. 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 And I think for a lot of people, of course, you can just say, I love this. I'm going to get it done. And you you don't even have to think about it anymore. I'm just, I'm going to get this. And then <laughs> you go spend your time investigating something else. It makes it like an easy decision rather than here's this new game. Now you have to investigate it. As you were talking about before, like, I don't have time to watch every video and every thing. Yeah. You can just say, like, got it. Right. Yeah. Also, just thinking that Azul is incredibly aggressive if you if you play it. Right. If you play that way, yeah, totally. It can be. It can totally. be. Yeah, two player especially. I yeah. love two I think I lost Azul. 17 points in the last game of uh, Stained Glass I played. Wow. Central. Yeah. <laughs> Where there's a, 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 no limit to the amount you can Yeah, lose. there's not. <laughs> well, I feel like that's uh, a common thing now with Roll and Ride. So there's a lot of, like, Roll and Write versions of sure. games where it's like, it's similar, but there's enough change where it's like a whole new thing. Yeah. You know, oh, I know I like this thing, but how do they twist it? Yeah. He just mentioned Quicks is going from a roll and write to, to a board, board game. Yeah, exactly. It's going the other direction. Now. Right? Yeah. Exactly. It'll, it'll just be keep, it's or bar. It's just, just going to keep going. Yeah, yeah. it's going to keep doing this over and over again. Uno, Uno. dice. <laughs> yeah, Uno. exactly. There you right? go. Yeah. And I want to yes, play that. Yeah. And I don't. I don't want to play Uno. But I'm like, well, what's? I do dice now. What's going on? Yeah, it's different. It's, I did the Skippo one recently, which yeah. is just like none of us had played Skippo in like 20 years. <laughs> yeah, right. You're we like, all knew the rules, so that's right. Carry on from there. Yeah. yeah, I've never played Skippo. You've never played Skippo. Oh, I played with Skip It. Remember Skip It? Yeah, from the 90s. Yeah, that's Great cool. toy. Is that the thing where you put it on your leg and it's, yeah, it just goes around, 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 around. around. jumper? Put a ball and yeah. chain and whip it around. It was good exercise. Those were really hard. Yeah. <laughs> so somewhat along the same lines, we've got a new Ticket to Ride map collection, number seven. Is how successful you are uh, with two two maps in there, double sided map. Uh, that will be. I don't know if you guys want to guess. I can say it. Oh gosh. It'll be Japan. announced by the time this goes live. Ooh, Japan's a good one. Uh, Canada Japan is correct. Japan is correct. Okay. okay. Oh, yes. One side. Yes. Okay. There's been a Ticket to Ride Japan that's been in the works more than a decade. I remember Alan talking about it a long time ago. Wow. So this wow. is something different. They haven't released the rules yet. I don't know all the details. But it's a long map because it's Japan. Yeah. So yeah. what's on the other oh, side? So, oh, what other long? It's Italy. Italy. Oh, oh no. Not, not Cuba? Um, I did not know. I did not know that. Ooh, Cuba Akron, Akron, Ohio. Ohio. Or something there like Chile, just incredibly long, but like yeah. it's yeah, just, it just one train That'd be route so intense. Down. Ooh, so, Italy, Japan. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, and again, it's like the same but different. Yeah. I know that I like it. And now what's the twist? Yeah. yeah. What's the new thing? Yeah, yeah. Right. Did they put all those expansions in boxes? The map collection ones, yeah. Because I saw your your teaser picture on Twitter earlier today. Yes. But like, I did they put? Because I remember they were not all in boxes. No, they are all or in boxes. It, you're thinking of power. Oh, they were thin. They're all in thin boxes. Yeah. Okay. Although the boxes have gotten a little fatter, the the six one, the the UK and the Pennsylvania one is a lot fatter because it has more cards in it. Yeah, that's true. And I believe like a quad, you know, a fourfold board. I forget the details of it. Right. But it's a fatter box and this one is also fatter as well because it says it's their longest map ever. <laughs> uh, ooh. There you go. So it's it's quad folded or yes, six I folded think, or something. I think so. We'll see. Tri folded. Cool. Congrats to Alan for <laughs> for you you did it. Success. Continuing. Yes. More more more. Uh on the other end, so from the things that you know to the totally obscure. It's an interesting little news item where at least two game publishers from Iran will be at Spiel with their titles, Reality Game and Dorahami Games. However, there's been some complications getting there because of U.S. sanctions. Oh. Uh -huh. As a result of the U.S. sanctions against doing business with companies and anyone in Iran, none of the German shippers are accepting packages from Iran uh, for delivery to the Mesa and Essen. Oh, so weird. the companies primarily are going to bring extra pieces of luggage or 
ship the stuff with them on the plane and just pay for the shipping, the, the cost of the extra packages on the plane. So if you want these items from Dorahama Games and Reality Games, pre-order because they are not going to bring much more than they are pre-ordering, apparently. Wow. Okay. They're trying to find licensors because if someone else publishes the games, then people can get them anywhere. But mm -hmm. wow. being published in Iran... So I remember there was a game from Iran last year, right? Deja. Was, yes. Uh, uh, Deja, new version which was Citadels. Citadels, yeah. yeah. Citadels, yeah. Wow. Yeah. The, I think they will be back again as well. Um, I haven't heard from them yet. But it's, it's interesting just the international nature of the publishing industry does not care about sanctions. It's just people want to play games. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, it's find true. Stuff for different places and play them. And yeah. Wow. So it's interesting just sort of the politics getting in the way there. Just yeah. a bit. Are individuals prohibited from bringing in games like sanctioned items from other countries? Not like I know I you know can't get a Cuban but... get, get cigar, right? Like, can you get a. That's right. I should say Iran state that I am Iran. not a lawyer. <laughs> I don't know. I just want, it's a thought process I'm going through right yeah, now. Yeah, I don't know. How are we going to get these games back? Because uh, we do go through a customs process. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't, but I mean, we're getting them yeah. from Germany. We are not. Yeah. We are okay. not doing business with Iran. But if they're made in Iran, it'll say it on the box. Hmm. I don't know. Well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> that's right. We'll have to see. Right. <laughs> We plan to interview both of them. At least that's that's the hope. So oh, yeah. maybe we maybe we ship those games in a separate box that will. Uh, or we just bring them in your in your luggage, right? Like yeah, yeah right. a part yeah, a part. We don't want pallets held up. It probably be worth looking into. Yeah. No, the pallets. Yeah, the pallets have to be clean. <laughs> well, well, let's say no problems, no no yeah. questions. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No right. they can't be in there. I would imagine because that would be uh, disastrous for our. Uh, oh yeah, huge pain. Coming to BG, no disasters. Oh, yeah, absolutely yeah. pain. Yeah. Oof. Well, that's great. Yeah. I'm gra I'm excited to see what those games are because those yeah. are unique titles instead of just reprints. Absolutely. That's true. Yes. Yeah. Those okay. are new titles, and it's just again, it's interesting to see what comes out of different countries just because they have different backgrounds in their games. So they're drawing on different references, different cultural mm -hmm. touch points. You know, Indonesia again is going to have a giant booth. Uh, with a number of Indonesian games, which I think they're still deciding on at this point because they haven't sent me the list yet. Last year, they did a competition where there were 40-something games, and they chose, I think, 15 or something. Wow, that's awesome. That's so, fantastic. Yeah. Again, there's all these sort of booths there. There's a Games from Spain booth. There's a Games from France booth. They're doing a lot of country-specific ones, I guess, for these smaller publishers to uh, put them all together. Cool. Very cool. So Spiel is as big as it's ever been. We get to Bigger. go back in through the front door. Yes. Right? Uh, yes. We don't have to walk the half mile around the side of it to get in. Eight, um, uh, 87,000 square meters of space. Wow. 7,000 larger than in 2018. Wow. wow. Jeez. Yeah. So, hmm. and again, we have only 41 hours in which to live stream. So we are not covering everything. But There's no we're way. Covering yeah. as much as we can. We're covering a lot. Yes. Cool. All right. That wraps up another episode of the Board Game Geek Show. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Yes. Thank you to my lovely co hosts, W. Eric Martin, Lincoln Damerst, and Nick and Mike Murphy, the Brothers Murph. Why don't you guys tell us what you got coming up? Uh, we, as always, are doing things on our uh, YouTube channel at the Brothers Murph. We do a weekly segment called Metagame Minute, where we talk about something in the hobby uh, and trying to get discussions going. Then we live stream on Twitch it, as well. Is it actually one minute? No. No. Listen yeah, how long this episode went. Do you think anything is going to be a minute? Yeah. yeah. I, well, no. I know you guys. So I know that it's <laughs> See, not in focus, to we're on minute. a script. Yeah. And then in we focus, have to we're stay on scripts. That's nice. I'm just as guilty as you guys. So yeah. I, I can't. We're talkers. I can't I cast stones for, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We enjoy um, talking about the hobby. So yeah. that's, that's what we got going on. And then we that's live stream good. and then in focus. Yeah. So uh, yep. a lot coming up. We're really pumped about it. Yeah. We've got. Uh, we filmed, as I mentioned, Abomination this weekend, and we did. Uh, Tapestry, which was Rodney's copy of the game. That, that game's been getting around. <laughs> <laughs> you have to buy him a new one. And we're filming some more stuff today I'm very excited about. We actually have the Quacksalver expansion coming soon uh, with uh. all the new beautiful bits, including the new expansion bits, which is just great. It looks so beautiful on the table. Oh, oh man. I want it so bad. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And why not give us a subscription if you like what you're watching? Click that little, smash that little subscription button down below. Or can you put the button like right here on my face? You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> I don't think so.
No. You can't put the things where you want. No, anymore. we can't. So anyway. so, there's so much limitation on all that stuff. <laughs> Boo. Yeah. I YouTube's think it's all changed. because of mobile, actually. Gosh darn those mobile. <laughs> yeah. Well, you Gosh need to do it. it. Also, if you want to write us, uh, send us a message, write us at the BGG show at boardgamegeek.com. Um, we will probably have another show where we feature some letters again soon. Um, yeah. So please consider writing us for that, and uh, that'd be great. Yeah. What was that email address again? BGG show at boardgamegeek.com. Oh, hey. I think that's right. It, it better right, cool. be. because I... <laughs> yeah, It better be. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.